Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live from Marble Fall High School. 
where we've got yet another Eastview baseball game coming to you on Vibe Live. Jack Farrell here. Eastview looking to break a little bit of a skid that they are on, entering at 1-4 and four in district play. They are matching up against this Marble Falls Mustang team that is currently winless in district play, so a good opportunity for Eastview to kind of right the ship a little bit here tonight. Out on the mound for the Mustangs, you see him out there now, Bryce Atkinson. For Eastview, it will be Patrick Reyes, so into the lineup in the field will be Gary Torres taking over at first base. Got a new shortstop in the lineup tonight for Eastview, Daniel Boyer. Haven't seen him in the lineup yet. I believe he was a call-up. So we'll see how he fares this evening. He is, as I said, playing at shortstop, hitting eighth here tonight. So he'll have himself a good opportunity against this Marble Falls team that has struggled to put it together coming off a 5-4 to four loss against Glenn. That was on Tuesday. It's another windy night here. We've had plenty of those so far this season, but... This one coming straight in at us, you see, might not be able to see it on the screen, but from here we got the, the flag out in right center field today, pretty much sticking straight out at us. But you know who it is leading off the lineup for your Eastview Patriots. It'll be Ben Berglund, Ryan Bullen, and Tyler Huerta. Tyler, we're in the number three today. Not sure the reasoning behind it. Perhaps it's a chance for him to you know, maybe get his luck back in order, maybe a little superstitious or maybe an equipment manager. Forgot to pack the number 11. Both are possible, if not equally possible. But we head now to the top of the first, the away half of the inning. Ben Berglund playing in left field once again will be leading off. Now here we go, Berglund into the box, and we are ready to get underway. First pitch comes as that swung on, kind of popped up on the infield, and that will be a one pitch out for Ben Berglund to get us underway here this evening. Making it easy on the pitcher, Bryce Atkinson, making him throw one pitch there. But I tend to be a fan of the aggressive approach even when it doesn't always work out. That pitch in there, strike two, so two pitches, two strikes for Atkinson. You can hear that wind coming in as the 0-1 is chopped foul, so three pitches, three strikes for Atkinson. And it's an 0-2 count to the second baseman now, Ryan Pullen. We've seen Ryan play a lot of shortstop as well as second base. But with the new shortstop in the lineup tonight, you shift it over to the first base side. Now the 0-2, as that's fought off, that pitch high, chopping out a play. Got to be worried about some of these foul balls <laughs> coming back and hitting some cars out of play here. There's another 0-2, as that inside hits pulling in the back, so 0-2 doesn't matter. Ryan heads to the base on the hit by pitch. And here's Patriot center fielder number three, Tyler Wert. <laughs> but the lefty steps in. Tyler followed up a one for three last Friday for a one for two with a double and a walk. So. He's been hitting it fine, and he starts off the number three era with a foul ball. That one just hooked inside, or outside the line, excuse me. He's been hitting well. And certainly not enough to prompt a whole identity change, the number. That's a big switch for an athlete. But now with one on and one out, Huerta with one strike. Looking to advance the second baseman pulling. Here's the pitch to him. That's going to skip low. Good job. Behind home plate was Isaiah Roman. Getting a stop on that one, forcing pulling back to first base. But Atkinson back to the mound. Where to back in. Atkinson checks pulling at first base. 
So now a ball and a strike. He's going to try and get the pickoff attempt here. That one. That one close. Pulling. Kind of dove back to the base instead of just getting low to the dirt. Which made it easier for the first baseman to maybe get a glove on him. But nothing doing. We head back to Huerta at home plate. That's Evan, or excuse me, Brady Elwarkowski over there at first base. Here's the pitch. That's swung on and lifted to center field. Ranging back for it is Nikowski. And Nikowski settles under it to put it away for out number two. Change the number back, Tyler. Brings up Jesus Santana with two outs. Atkinson back to the rubber. Juggling the ball a little bit in that throwing hand. Comes set, and here's the pitch. That misses high, ball one. Santana, another right-handed fixture in this lineup. Been in cleanup throughout this season. He went 0 for 2 with a walk against Cedar Park. Looking to get some of that offensive productivity back along with the newfound defensive excellence. He's been much better over there at third base as we have gone on this season. Here's the 1-0. That one skips low. Another good stop there behind home plate. Zayas Roman doing a good job. He's working hard back there already in the first inning. But now a 2-0 count to the Patriot cleanup hitter. The 2-0. That's swung on and lifted high into the air, playable into foul territory, ranging underneath it and trying to find it. And calling off is the shortstop, so there to put it away is Jake Carter on a pop out to third base. So that does it for Eastview in the top half of the first inning. They can't do anything with Ryan Pullen's one out hit by pitch. As we now head to the bottom of the first inning, it'll be Patrick Reyes on the mound for your Patriots. Shortstop Jake Carter, catcher Isaiah Roman, and John Zamaripa, the second baseman, will be the first three up for Marble Falls right after this. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Back into Patriot Baseball on Vipe Live. Hope you all had a good week. It's an, always an excellent way to kick off your weekend is with some baseball. A little sparser of a crowd here as Marble Falls is a bit of a trek. And 7 o'clock can be tough to make when some place is about an hour and a half away. So, you might be enjoying some enhanced viewership here tonight, and if that is the case, welcome. We are happy to have you on Vibe. My name's Jack, and I will be your host for this evening. It's Patrick Reyes to the mound. Now stepping in is Jake Carter. Reyes pitched last Friday against Rouse. He's in there with strike one tonight. So both pitchers get a first pitch strike in the game. That one misses low, gets away from Quintanilla, but with no traffic on the bases. Carter, the right-handed shortstop. Leading off here with a 1-1 count. Here comes Reyes. That's going to miss outside, so 2-1. Reyes comes set once again. Here's the 2 on. That's fouled back, strike two. Yeah. 
Umpire shaking that one off. Cleaning the plate. <laughs> A little fist bump, and we are back and ready to go. Got a pretty good view of the ballpark from the stands here tonight. You can see all three bases. And now staying alive there on the foul ball is Carter. Another 2 2 pitch coming to Jake. Reyes. This one's poked out to second base, pulling, charging it. The throw over is low, but easily in time for out number one. So Gary Torres and Ryan Pullen combined for the first out. Brings up Isaiah Roman. As the Liberty Hill fans all clapping along to the walk up. Second batter of the night starts off with the ball. Ramon, the catcher. Already with a solid body work here in the game in the first inning. A few good stops with pulling on the bases. Is that one right down the pipe, strike one. These two pitching struggles have settled in a little bit as we have moved further into this district run. Now the 1-1. One, one. That's a swing and a miss, strike two to Roman. Neither team with a hit so far. Of course, just the second batter for the Mustangs. Not the gold uniforms here tonight. The 1-2. That's a swing and a miss, strike three. Patrick Reyes has his first of the day. Roman, the victim, brings up Young Zamaripa. Young, the second baseman here for Marble Falls, number 14. Batting in the three hole with nobody on. Two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Here's the pitch. Zach catches the outside corner at strike one. The 0 1 coming in, that's going to miss high. We are enjoying every night we can of this spring weather as we continue. <laughs> 79 degrees as that one just misses. Reyes thought that one was in the zone, but instead it's ball two. Don't want it to get any hotter. So in and I with a nice breeze, that's that's plenty. As this one's fouled back our way, so that is strike two. Ray is looking for his second punch out of the game of the inning. <laughs> All right, the two two coming in. Is that misses high? The count goes full. Eastview looking for a three up, three down first. Reyes looking to do just that. Here's the three two. Is that's a swing and a miss at a pitch high. And that'll be the second strikeout of the inning for Patrick Reyes as we now head to the top of the second. He'll be hitting second in this inning. It'll be Torres, Reyes, and Quintanilla due up for your Patriots. And the top of the second inning. We'll be right back. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Woohoo. The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. 
like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Top of the second now. As we are ready for it, it is Bryce Atkinson once again on the bump. Ready for his second inning of work. Is that one getting away from the catcher, Ramon? But for your Patriots, Gary Torres is due up here, as you see, number 14, step into the plate. Tour is at first base today. Depends on if Reyes is in the lineup. Patrick usually over at first base, but when Patrick's pitching, Gary takes over first base duties. Otherwise, the DH for this team. As he takes the first pitch for ball one. It's a good take from Torres, as that one didn't miss by much. <clears throat> but here's Atkinson, working quickly from the 1-0. That's a big cut at strike one. Count even at one. Atkinson gets his sign. Here he comes with a 1-1. One, one. That's high, ball two. Gary looking for the first Patriot hit of the ball game in the second inning. Now, that one misses outside. Instead, he might get the first walk of the inning, of the game, excuse me. Poland reached in uh, the first inning when he was hit in the back by a pitch. As this is the 3-1. That's fouled off strike two, so a full count to Santana. Or excuse me, to Torres. Pullen reaching by the hit by pitch, the only base runner of the game so far for Eastview. Torres looking to change that. So now the 3 2. Atkinson delivers. Is that swung on and missed? Strike three. That's the first strikeout of the game for Atkinson. So Bryce Atkinson waves Torres. That'll bring up the pitcher. So we have a pitcher versus pitcher duel right here. But righty on lefty as Patrick Reyes steps to the plate. Atkinson, first pitch to Reyes. That catches the outside corner at strike one. So now 0-1 with one out. Nobody on here for ECU in the top of the second. 0-1, that's chopped foul down the first baseline. So 0-2, Brady Olerkowski, first baseman here for Marble Falls. As Ray is with an 0-2, here's the pitch. As he did not go around on that as that misses high for ball one. Ray is doing a good job keeping his bat back. So he stays alive now with a one and two count. <clears throat> Atkinson gets his sign. Here's the one two. That misses outside for ball two. Gutsy take there as the count evens up to a piece. Now two balls, two strikes, as that's going to miss as well. Ball three, count full after Reyes went down 0-2. Quintanilla on deck for Eastview. Here's the payoff. 
as that's foul tipped back, but out of the glove of the catcher, Roman, so we will stay alive. Still a 3-2 count, still one out here at the top of the second. Giving the play on. Here's Atkinson. Misses outside with that one, so the first walk of the game issued for either side. It is drawn by the pitcher, Patrick Reyes. He's aboard with one out here in the top of the second. That's the second Patriot base runner, both of them. Not on hits. One with a walk and one with a hit by pitch. That brings up Quintanilla. Been hitting better as of late. Went one for three against Cedar Park on Tuesday with a pair of strikeouts and a double. Takes this one inside, that's ball one. So Atkinson now having a little bit of trouble finding the strike zone. Went up 0-2 against Reyes before walking him, but Patrick did pepper in a few foul balls there, so it isn't four straight balls here from Atkinson. So the 1-0 to him, that's going to miss as well, ball two. Now it's starting to stack up. Now two balls and a strike to the Eastview catcher. Throw over is not close as easily able to get back to the bases. Goldman. Ronnie out there pinch hitting. Or excuse me, pinch running for Patrick Reyes. As he is the pitcher, you can do that. But the duo, Quintanilla pops this one foul. That'll get out of play, but right into the stands. Everyone's okay. <laughs> that loud clang of metal. Unpleasant. But we head back to the field of play. It's a 2-1 count now to Joe Quintanilla. Looking to get a one-out rally going. And play on we shall. Here's the 2-1. Atkinson checking for his base. Is that swing and a miss at an off-speed pitch? That was a good one. Atkinson showing off a little of the repertoire with that one. Now two balls, two strikes. Daniel Boyer on deck. Look forward to see what he's got. Atkinson delivers the 2-2. Two -two. That's fouled off as well. That one will get out of play. Big hop off the parking lot. And avoiding any cars. It's a beautiful thing. But now Quintanilla back to it. Looking at a 2-2 count as he fouls this one off as well. That one headed back out and over the cars. I'm worried. I'm parked back there. You know, Quintanilla's got to calm down. Send it forward, Joe. Forward. If only it were that simple as here's another 2-2 to him as he's going to take this one. It's a good call. It's ball three. But now another full count, back-to-back -back full counts. Actually, back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, each of the three batters have worked at full in this top of the second inning, including Torres, who struck out. Now Quintanilla, 3-2, swings on this one just early. Sends this one foul. Now the 3 2. Quintanilla back into the box. Runner goes. That's going to be a ball, so the throw down does not matter. So that's back to back. Walks for Eastview, and they've got a little something going here in the top of the second now.
Back in. Might have lost us for a second there. Should be good to go now. But it's Daniel Boyer due up after the Quintanilla walk. And Daniel with his first at-bat as he's entered the lineup. So that's another ball issued to him. He's now two on with one out for Eastview in the top of the second inning. Boyer with an RBI chance in his first time up. So he comes up swinging. That one's fouled off, but he's showing off some power with that swing. That's long gone if it's about <laughs> 30 feet the other direction, but he still hit it hard. But now a ball and a strike to the Patriot shortstop. The 1-1 to him now. That hits him. So now the bases are loaded with one out to Randall Ellis. So a pair of hits by pitch. Hit by pitches? Yeah, whatever. Uh, two of those and two walks are all the Patriot base runners, but they've got them loaded here in the top of the second. Still hitless, but Randall Ellis with a chance to break his. It's been a cold streak for him. Ellis did reach via hit by pitch against Cedar Park in the second inning, but I was, uh, he was hitless as he swings through this one for strike one. Either way, barring a double play ball, it'll be a big opportunity for Berglund, who will come up. But Ellis with, an, uh, with a sacrifice chance, an RBI chance, as he hits this one hard. This... With the speed of him, it should be hard to turn two, and they will not make the throw. They get the out at second base, so Boyer is out. But Ellis is safe on the fielder's choice and scores a run, and Eastview is on top first. They strike in the top of the second inning, one to nothing. Still hitless. So Quintanilla moves to third. Reyes comes all the way home. And Eastview has the lead. Now Berglund with two outs. Runner's going to go. That's going to skip in the dirt. Ellis will have a free base. Bergman had a one for four day against Cedar Park because that's going to miss outside and the ball is starting to stack up for Atkinson once again. Bergman tends to be good for about a, one base hit a game and this would not be a bad time to go ahead and spend that, spend that hit, spend that token. So he's now looking at a 2-0 count with two outs on the top of the second. Two runners in scoring position, anything into the outfield likely scores two with Ellis' speed. That's going to miss low. He's got a three to nothing count. Brian Pullen is on deck. Atkinson having to work hard out there. Eastview. Some of these pitches haven't been close, but some of them have been some excellent takes from Eastview. Is that one? Berglund taking all the way. That's a strike. So now Berglund will have to compete. Good job for Atkinson just getting back into the A-B with that strike. But here's the pitch. So that's fouled back. It's quickly a full count. There's that number three. <laughs> it's now Berglund, the 3-2. Chops this one straight to third base. The third baseman had a hard time coming up with it. The throw is going to go high. Berglund is going to be safe, and he's going to scamper all the way to second base. Two runs are going to score on the throwing error from the third baseman, Hudson McBride. You saw it, he knocked it down, and Berglund, still it did not look like he would have beat that out, even though he knocked it down and took a little bit of time, so I think that will go in as an E5. It is, and Eastview is on top three to nothing. They have technically not recorded a hit. As we are ready to go now with Ryan Pullen. He's got another RBI opportunity. 
as a runner is going to get away there, and now Atkinson is starting to fall apart a little bit. He's just having a hard time finding the zone here. Owner of a silver Corolla. He's blocking somebody in. <laughs> As that one is in there for a strike. And just something for breathing room. That's swung on and missed, so now Ryan Pullen is down in the count one of two. Atkinson finding it in a big way against the Eastview second baseman. We now have a ball and a strike. Two outs, runner on third base. That's fouled off. He's chasing high at that thing. Is that one flying? Ooh. Some of these balls are just narrowly missing cars in a way that really is stressing me out. But my car's fine so far. Shouldn't have said that. That's a dangerous thing to say. But now a 1-2. That one's lifted over the infield. Charging up on it is the left fielder, and he is there for the putout. So out in left field, Jet Zurita, designated fielder. So Ryan Pullen flies out to left. And that will do it for Eastview in the top of the second inning, but they bring three home on a walk, a walk, a fielder's choice, and a throwing error. They score three points, or excuse me, they score three runs there. And the top of the second inning, we head to the bottom of the second. Patrick Reyes handled the top of the order for Marble Falls' last time up with a 1-2-3 inning. So it's 4-5-6. Cole Cochran, Hudson McBride, and Brady, Brady Elworkowski do up here in the bottom of the second. Going to go ahead and take a quick break. We will be back for the bottom of the second. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help! Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Quick turnaround between innings. Zarez is back on the mound. Missed with the first pitch, but the second one is fouled off. So Cole Conkren in inning number two. He's a right fielder for this Marble Falls team. He's looking at a 1-1 count. Reyes delivers. Misses outside, ball two. Two-one. It's going to miss high, so three-one now to the leadoff hitter for Marble Falls in the second. Three balls, one strike. Here's Reyes. Ooh, a big cut there at the pitch. It's Cole Cochran. Can't make contact with strike two. Right fielder looking for the first Marble Falls base runner of the day, as he will be that as that full count pitch misses downstairs, and Marble Falls is aboard with a leadoff walk. So now one on with nobody out. It's Hudson McBride, the third baseman, to the plate. So that's an aggressive approach there from McBride. Sends this one foul. A lot of power behind that swing as he's down in the count 0-1. One on, nobody out. Runner going to have to go. Is this one going to get
get Ty pulling at second base, the runners are going to have to stay with just taking the one bag. But a quick walk and a quick base hit. So Cochran advances one base to second. McBride with the base hit. Some solid contact for him. Brings up Brady Overkowski. He's got a chance to bring somebody home. There's Reyes. This one sent over the head of Pullen at second base. Into right field. A runner being waved around. They're sending him to third base. The throw over will not be in time. Santana able to knock it down. So now runners at first and third. One run scores. Still nobody out. So they've got to Reyes here in the top of the second. Brings up Evan Nikowski. First pitch, breaking ball, finds his own strike one. Atkinson, the pitcher on deck. Checks the runner at first. The 0 1. Even now. A ball and a strike now. This one's chopped back to the mound. They check the runner at third base, and the throw over is in time for out number one. So that's the first out. The runner from first does advance to second base. So it's McBride at third and Elwerkowski at second. Brings up Bryce Atkinson. So another pitcher v. pitcher duel. Both teams electing to have the pitcher in, this, uh, in the batting order here tonight. Much like that game against Cedar Park, because this one's going to be scooped. Into left field, one run will score. They will hold the runner at third base. So a little cue shot from the pitcher, Bryce Atkinson, nets him a single. McBride comes home. So that makes it a two to three ball game. Brings A.J. Scoville to the plate, the D.H. Jet Zarita out in left field, not in the batting order tonight. Scoville with another chance to bring home a run with one out. The runner goes on the steal. Quintanilla's throw down is not going to be in time, and that's going to get over the hands of the shortstop, and another run will come home on the throw down. So a stolen base for Atkinson, and a run comes home, and we have a tie game. So the pitching and the hitting. Really coming together in the same evening here for Eastview so far in this district run. But now with one out, one runner on second base. The inning will continue with Reyes on the mound. That one's going to miss for ball one. So three runs each in the second inning. And counting for Marble Falls as this one's popped up on the infield. As no one's called for it yet, but it's going to go to Santana, the third baseman. Brings up Jake Carter. Carter grounded out to second his first time up. And now he comes to the plate with one aboard at second and two outs. So no more sacrifice opportunity to advance that runner. As this one's going to skip in the dirt. Runner's going to get out and go. Quintanilla not going to throw it. Not worth it. As anything into the outfield likely would have scored that runner anyway with two outs. So the extra 90 feet. Doesn't really do much for Marble Falls in this situation. But this is a perfect opportunity for an infield single from Jake Carter. Just to rub it in. The 1-0, that's going to miss low for ball two. Seventh batter of the inning for Marble Falls. Still looking to add on more as this one's hit high and foul. Two 
and one now the count. That's three hits in the inning for Marble Falls. 2-1, going to miss the outside corner for, for, uh, for ball three. That's a tough take there from Carter. Now three balls, one strike. Is that one scooped right at the shortstop and coming to catch it out of the air is the young fella, number eight. Daniel Boyer making his presence felt there to end the inning, but not before Marble Falls is able to tack on three with three base hits and a walk. They tie it up three apiece. We head now to the top of the third. Due up for your Patriots will be Tyler Huerta, Jesus Santana, and Gary Torres. We'll be right back with that. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. Don't go anywhere. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape. Meet new people and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Rob. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. We've got some substitutions here going into the top of the third. All of them out on defense. First of all, we've got a new pitcher. That's the, the main event here. Evan Nikowski, who started in center, will be moved to the mound. Yon Zamaripa, who started at second, has been moved out to right. And Cole Cochran, who started in right, will be moved to center. So center fielder comes to pitch. Right fielder moves to center field. Second baseman moves to right field. And the pitcher will move to second base. So Bryce Atkinson now at second base. Cole Cochran now in center field. Zemaripa now in right. And of course on the mound, number one, Evan Nikowski. He's got a tall order for the first batter that he will face. It's the heart of the lineup. It's three, four, five. Tyler Huerta and Jesus Santana will be the first two that he face. And there is number three, Tyler Huerta, up to the plate. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss high. So Nikowski starting Huerta off with a ball. Comes set for his second pitch. That one's chopped foul. One bounced off the ankle of Huerta. He comes up okay, though. Can always be scary. As we enter the third here. A ball and a strike to the Patriot center fielder. Takes this one inside. That's going to miss for ball two. As the 2-1, it's going to skip into the dirt. Unfortunately for Eastview, nobody on the base is there. But now... One pitch away from a leadoff walk for Tyler Huerta. Here comes Nikowski. As that catches the zone for strike two. Is now another 3 2. That's going to miss high. Another full count for a Mustang pitcher and another walk to an East View batter. It's the third walk of the game in as many innings. Brady. 
brings up Jesus Santana. He's going to swing at the first pitch, chop it over to the third base side, gets past the third baseman. Shortstop can't glove it. And so that will be an infield single. Would have been tough to get Santana out at first base, even if Jake Carter was able to get a glove on that thing as it got deep past the third baseman. So we'll record that as a base hit, and wouldn't you know it, that's the first one of the night technically for Eastview. Maybe more will follow as Huerta moves to second base. It's another opportunity with a runner in scoring position. Gary Torres due up, struck out to start the second inning. He'll be started off with the ball as well. Torres takes another pitch. That one in there for strike one. Torres looking to get back on the right side of things with his bat as he did go over three against Cedar Park. He's now down one and two. Looking to avoid a second strikeout. Nikowski, the one two. He gets Torres chasing low. As no, it's going to be. Oh, yes, it will be a strikeout. So Torres goes down on strikes again. That's just the first out of the inning. Patrick Reyes, who walked his first time up, another lefty steps in. Eastview looking for a second hit. Potentially take the lead, try and drive Huerta home. Reyes takes that inside. Quintanilla on deck also walked his last time up. The 1-0. So he swings at a pitch low. That one's going to get to the second baseman. Having to hold up on it was Jesus Santana, but he's able to reach second base. They just go for the out at first. So both runners advance, but that's now two outs in the inning. Quintanilla. Big opportunity here. Can add two more with just one swing of the bat. Drew a full count and walked his first time up as he starts off with a strike looking. These two with at least one runner aboard in each of these three innings thus far. Quintanilla taking both, both of them strikes. So now quickly 0-2 to the Patriot catcher. Boyer on deck if we get that far. Nikowski looking in. Comes set for the 0-2. The delivery. And misses outside. So good take for Quintanilla. Seeing that one well outside. He's got a ball and a strike to work with now. Ball and two strikes to work with. Here's Nikowski. That one high. Almost seemed like a pitch out, but was a little too far inside for that. The count evens up, though, two and two. Quintanilla in the market for a more competitive pitch now. Two, two, two on, two out. As Quintanilla fouls that back. Ooh. Car's safe. I don't need another thing wrong with mine, so <laughs> I would prefer if it... Uh, Stayed out of my direction, but here's the 2-2. As Quintanilla, early on that one, waves at it. That's strike three, and that will end the inning. So nothing comes about for Eastview in the third, though they got two on with nobody out. A walk and a base hit is all that they can muster, as we will now flip things over now to the other side. It's the bottom of the third coming up. It will be two, three, and four hitters. Isaiah Roman, Yon Zamaripa, and Cole Cochran do up for the Marble Falls Mustangs right after this.
What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Reyes back on the mound, so he will try for a third inning of work. Marble Falls, their starter only going two innings. See if Reyes can get back under control after a tough inning in the second. So Reyes to the plate, Roman in the box. Taking the first pitch outside for ball one. Good eye for the Mustang catcher. The sun's starting to come out out in Marble Falls, or come down out in Marble Falls. The 1-0. Early on that one, strike one. Ball and a strike. Reyes delivers. High for ball two. Is the pace of this one slowing down here a little bit? Now the 2 1. That one's hit high and foul. So the count even, two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter, Ramon. Three hits in the game for the Mustangs, just one so far for Eastview, but we do have a tie game. The 2-2 delivery, that's fouled back. Ramon reaching out at that one just to stay alive. Another 2-2. Two -two. That one's poked and rolling foul along the first baseline. I'm ready to go once again. Ray has two of the rubber. Looking in. The 2-2 two -two once again. Another foul ball. Do the whole thing over. This is the foul ball competition between the two dugouts. Cedar Park was winning that battle on Tuesday. Eastview has it handily here tonight. Another 2 2. Make it a 3 2. This is a heck of an at bat from Isaiah Roman. The full count with the pitch. That one's lifted into center field. Where to having to jog back on it, but settles underneath it and is there for out number one. So the leadoff threat is down. After going down in the count, able to get it back. Brings Zamaripa to the plate. He only struck out his first time up. Reyes struck out two in the first, has yet to do it since. Zamaripa sends this one to the shortstop. Boyer charges up on it, the throw over, and an excellent pick there at first base. Beautiful play from Gary Torres for out number two. So Boyer and Torres, nifty little put out there.
Ray is looking to make his inning or make his uh, his living in odd numbered innings. Went three up, three down in the first. Has his first two down here. Misses with that pitch. It's ball one to the center fielder now, Cole Cochran. That one's going to miss for ball one or ball two. Now 2 0. Cochran taken all the way there. It's ball three. So a 3 0 count. Reyes delivers. That catches the outside corner. It's strike one. So now for Cale Cochran. Three balls and one strike. He walked his first time up. That got the big second inning rally going with the leadoff. That's going to miss upstairs for ball four. So a two-out threat has now come to the base paths. It's Cale Cochran. Aboard with the walk at first base. Hudson McBride singled his first time up. Came around to score the second run of the inning. That one's laced over the infield. That'll get down, but no, Huerta diving on it to make the put out. Huerta playing very shallow there. It looked like that would be well down for a base hit. I didn't see how far up that Tyler was playing. He lays out and is able to get the put out for out number three, so a little liner from Hudson McBride is not enough to keep the two-out rally going. Marble Falls only able to muster one walk there in the bottom of the third. We head now to the top of the fourth. For the Patriots, it will be Boyer, Ellis, and Berglund due up as the batting order will turn around for the third time. We will head to the bottom or the top of the fourth right after this. You're listening to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. This game's starting to move quickly. Back to the mound will be number 12, Evan Nikowski. His second inning of work worked out. Of a two, he, well, he let the first two batters he faced reach a walk to Huerta and a single from Santana. But after that, got Torres on strikes, Reyes grounded out to second, and Quintanilla struck out. So nifty work getting out of that thing. And now it's the bottom of the order, 8 9 1, due up for Eastview. Boyer, the JV call up. Stepped in at short, made a couple good plays at in the field already. Was hit by a pitch his first time up with a ball and a strike. So didn't really get to see his attitude here at the plate. But the righty, ooh, that one just fouled down the third base line. Would have been tough, would have been two bases. Nikowski. The 0 1. That catches it. Strike two. Del Boyer didn't like that call. But now, the 0 2. That's going to miss high. No shot on that pitch. The one two now. Boyer looking at that one. Ooh, that one looked well outside, but they're gonna get Boyer looking for strike three. Boyer
Boyer in disbelief. Might have to side with him on that one. As I obviously have a much better angle than the umpire. <laughs> And that one did look like it was testing the outer limits of the strike zone. As now that's a one out strikeout. But Ellis now to the plate. He reached, but it was via fielder's choice. So if Ellis, plenty of speed from him in the nine hole. Takes this one as the... Yeah, that one looked a little outside too, so... Umpire giving these pitchers the edges here tonight. So one and one, one out. That one misses inside as as long as the outside corner is consistent, it can be as far outside as you want. You know within reason. <laughs> but there's a two one, that's chopped over to first base. Pitcher coming over to cover, and that will be out number two. No, they're gonna say safe. Looks like <laughs> when Nikowski was stutter-stepping to try and get a foot in that bag, he just missed. I can't see how from here that's not a put-out, but Ellis is going to reach via, I'm going to call that an E1. But Eastview certainly will take one on with one out, then nobody on with two outs, and Ben Berglund heads. To the batter's box once again. He's over two. Chops this one to the second baseman. This one a little bit easier of a play. And Ellis advances to second base. Berglund did reach on an error in the second. Was the bat that brought home two of those runs. But now Ryan Pullen trying to keep the inning alive. Maybe trying to take the lead with the ball hit into the outfield. Righty chopping at this one. This one headed down to the third baseline. Pulling 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in the first and flew out in the second. He ended the inning in the second. He's now looking at nothing in one. Another two out situation for him. A runner in scoring position. That one's going to miss inside. Pulling sold it. Big opportunity for Poland here. There's a big hole between the shortstop and the third baseman. Short playing far over to the second base side. As that pitch misses for Nikowski and Ryan Poland now looking at a 2 1 count. Huerta on deck is Yushu. A good shot to keep this thing going. Here's a 2 1. So that's going to miss for Poland. 3 and 1. Where to 0 for 1 today, a fly out and a walk. The 3-1 pitch, Dukowski checks the runner. He steps off. Try to get Ellis, chase him back to second. And we will resume. Three balls, one strike, two outs for Poland. As he swings at this one, lifts this one over into the East View dugout. So the count full. A big spot here for Nikowski. Checks the runner. The 3 2. As Poland just got a piece of the bat off on that one. He fouls it off for yet another 3-2 pitch coming. Breeze has cooled off quite a bit, but still a windy day out here. And just as I say that, it picks up a little bit more. Ellis <laughs> retreats back to second. So temperature has gone down 5 degrees since we've been out here. But here comes Nikowski once again, the 3-2, as Poland chased it, that one all the way. That was well outside. 
Pullen frustrated with himself as that will end the inning. Eastview able to get Ellis on with an error, but that's it. Still just one hit on the game. They still have it tied 3-3 three to three as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning against Marble Falls. It'll be Reyes once again, so he's looking for his fourth inning to complete. It'll be Elwerkowski, Nikowski, and Atkinson due up for Mustangs in the bottom of the fourth inning. We will be back in just a moment. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Brady Elwerkowski walking up to the uh, the Kahoot music. If you don't know what Kahoot is, ask your school-aged children. Because that one's fouled off. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's so funny. Walking up to the, the Kahoot music is insane. Quick meeting at the mound. Between Quintanilla and Reyes, we have an 0-1 count to the leadoff hitter in the fourth inning. Reyes gets the sign, sets, delivers. Beautiful pitch. That one tailed back into the zone for strike two. It's 0-2 now with Elwerkowski. The 0-2 you know, has been a, a, a troublesome spot for Eastview pitchers so far this season. To nullify some of those struggles here, here's the 0-2, and he does just that. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's the first strikeout for Patrick Reyes since the third out in the first inning. Brings up Nikowski, the current pitcher, grounded out. Right back to Ray is his first time up in the second. It was the first out of the inning. Zach catches the outside corner. There you see that outside corner is it's pretty far out there. These guys are going to have to start reaching for some of these pitches. But it's been consistent on both sides, so. The 0 1. As now you see, he was reaching out at that pitch as that one was going to be a little bit outside as well. You establish the rules and give the player some time to adjust. As long as you don't start changing it around on them, they will do as such. But now another 0 2 count that's back to back for Reyes. As that's back to back three pitch strikeouts. I think a couple of those were, at least one of those was fouled off, so immaculate inning off the table, but still an excellent start to the bottom of the fourth for Patrick Reyes. Bryce Atkinson now singled his first time up, as that's going to miss outside, and there, there it goes anyway. Atkinson, two innings pitched. He's one for one with a stolen base as well. Is now looking at a two to nothing count. Atkinson brought in that final run to even this game up, but now a 2 0 count to him as he's swinging, sends this one far down the right field line, and that one's going to get out of play. Appreciate Ellis trying to run that thing down anyway. Now two balls and a strike. Looking for another 1-2-3 inning. He's got a 2-1 count, though. Now 3-1. In the first, Marble Falls went down in order. In the third, just one walk. Second is where they have done 
literally all of their damage. So Reyes with the 3-1 delivery. This one's fouled back right towards us. So the count full. Eastview looking to escape this one without any base runners. The full count. The payoff. As he reaches out and pokes this one into right field. Ellis charging back, settles underneath, and is there for out number three. Another 1-2-3 inning, the second of the game for Patrick Reyes as his good outing continues. For Eastview, they will head to the top of the fifth. It's their turn to try and get something going here. They haven't had much success since the second inning as now Tyler Huerta will lead things off. It's a good opportunity for Eastview to get things going. It'll be Huerta, Santana, and Torres due up in the top of the fifth inning. Nikowski is back out there for another inning of work. We will head to the top of the fifth right after this. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Top of the fifth. As after a slow pace to get us started, this game is just rocketed by much of that due to the lack of offense for either team. It's only four combined hits, six combined runs as Tyler Huerta comes to the plate. Walked his last time up in the third. He's 0 for 1 today. As Nikowski starts him off with a strike to get the top of the fifth underway. Is this the now third inning of work for Nikowski? That's in the dirt. Bryce Atkinson only went two. This reliever, Evan Nikowski, looking for his third complete. But now a ball and a strike to Huerta. Tyler moves out of the way to avoid that thing. It's now two balls and a strike. Huerta, the lefty, one of the most potent bats in this Patriot lineup. It's a fixture in the three hole. Now 2-1, there's a big cut there, that's strike two. This is Huerta's coldest streak of the season thus far. As now he lifts this one into right field as that's a base hit, a lead off single for Tyler Huerta. And by worst is has been by coldest stretch of, of the season. I mean, he's hasn't had a multi-hit game in a while. He's still swinging the bat very well. Just he's hitting to the tune of, of one for four instead of two for four. Technically went one for two against Cedar Park. And in the game before that, he went one for three. But now that's where he's at. Once again, one for two. But he also walked, so he's reached safely in two out of his three at-bats, and it was a full count when he walked, so worked that at-bat pretty well. Brings up Jesus Santana, singled his last time up. A ball to him already as he fouls it back. Strike one.
Swear to able to get back. Is that going to get the arm of Jesus Santana? So he will head to first base on the hit by pitch. Brings up Gary Torres, a guy who's really struggled with the bat. This will be a good opportunity for him with nobody on and or nobody out and two on. Gary's struggled to hit it. Gary hitless tonight. He has reached safely uh, plenty of times with hit by pitches and walks, but he has yet to record a base hit since the Glenn game, in which he went one for four, but he did reach with a hit by pitch. So it's been a while for Gary with the base hit as he's going to try and lay a bunt down as that one's going to get away as the runners are going to score. The catcher doesn't have the ball yet. Huerta thought about coming home with that for a second, but Nikowski would have been ready for it. But Torres now with an 0-2 count. The runners advance on the pass ball. So an even better opportunity for Torres. He is a lefty, so if he just sends it over to that right side of the infield, that should be enough to bring Huerta home, especially with an aggressive base runner like him. But the 0-2, as Torres takes that one, that's a heck of a take. That one looked like it just missed high. So the first baseman looking to make his cuts as he steps back into the box with a 1-2. Swing and a miss at a half swing from Torres. That's his third strikeout of the game. Gary in a bit of a funk here. Hope he can break out of it soon. But still just one out, two on, both of them in scoring position for Patrick Reyes, who has walked and grounded out. And he's another lefty, so anything pushed over to that second baseman. As he's going to swing at this one, drive this one foul. I like the aggressive approach for Patrick. One for three against Cedar Park. Still looking for him for another big one as this is grounded straight to the first baseman. That's going to get away from him a bit, so he'll just have to take the put out. Runners will advance. Huerta will come in to score. It's a four to three ball game for Eastview. So Reyes gets the sacrifice. Still looking for Reyes on a four for five game like he had against Glenn, but of course that's gonna be an anomaly more than anything. Brings up Quintanilla. That's the second out of the inning. Is that one gonna get away? The runner will have to stay. So Santana now chilling at third base. We've got a lead. And two outs for Joe Quintanilla walk and a strikeout today. He's looking at a 1-0. As Quintanilla chops at this one, that's going to scoop out a play. Patriot catcher looking at a 1-1 count. Righty looking to send this one through the gap in the infield. Ball and a strike. That one's going to catch the outside corner. That's strike two. So the scoreboard showing one out. There's two outs. Strike out to Torres and the sacrifice from Reyes. The one two. That's going to miss high to Quintanilla. Ball gets away, but not far enough for Santana to come home. So that's two two with two outs, one on. Daniel Boyer is on deck. We've got two balls and two strikes. Yeah. 
Here comes the 2-2 two -two from Nikowski. That one's going to miss outside. A good take from Quintanilla. That one just a little high, a little outside. The count full. Two outs. Here's the pitch. That one swung on, lifted out of play, so Nikowski will have to work on it again. Evan Nikowski comes set. Here's the delivery. Is that one's going to miss outside, so Quintanilla going to reach on a two-out walk. That's his second base on balls today. Brings up Daniel Boyer, still looking for his first hit. Struck out and was hit by a pitch. It'll be another RBI opportunity here. His first RBI opportunity came with nobody out in the second. He was hit by a pitch. Or with one out in the second, excuse me. But now he has a chance with two outs to bring a runner home from third as he's taking this one outside. Daniel looking for his first varsity hit here with Ellis on deck. But ECU does have the lead already in the inning. There's a big hole between third and short. So we're going to chase the runner back to first. Hector Perez, I believe, on the base paths. Yes, number 21, Hector Perez at first base. Taking a sizable lead. The 0 1. Boy, you're watching this one in. Another pitch dot in the outside corner. So Nikowski has it dialed in over there. The 0 2. I'm going to check the runner again. Nikowski, awful worried about that runner over at first base, although he's got an 0-2 with two outs. Another throw over. That one closer than most, but Perez is still back safely. Boyer, back to the box with a long layoff between pitches. Now here's the 0-2 to him. As he chops this one, that will get through the infield. An RBI single to Daniel Boyer. And that makes this a 5-3 ball game. A nice piece of hitting to just get that one right in between that gap between short and third. Like I said, if they're going to give you a gap that big, use it. Defense made the Boyer's job as easy as they could. Does that bring Santana home? And Quintanilla advances to second base on the base hit from Boyer. Brings up Brendel Ellis. Reached on an error his first time up as he starts us off with a foul ball. So with Perez on second, anything in the outfield will likely score him with two outs. That one well high. So Daniel Boyer reaching safely on two of his three at-bats in his, we'll call it his debut. One of them a hit by pitch, though. Not bad. That one's going to miss low. A beautiful job stopping that pitch for Isaias Roman. As each runner would have had a free bag if that one gets away. But now Ellis, two balls and a strike to him, still two outs. They still haven't adjusted the scoreboard. Reyes on the sacrifice ground out, and Torres on the strikeout. There's another 2 1, as that one's going to miss inside. It's a 3 1 count to Randall Ellis. Berglund threatening on deck. Eastview already tallying two. So two innings, two crooked numbers for Eastview. They've got five. Perez has to scooch back to the second base. No one covering the bag, so 
Really no throw threat. This one's going to get away. The runner's going to go, but it was a walk. So Joe Quintanilla is being pinch run for by Hector Perez, and Hector Perez is at third base. Boyer moves to second on the walk, and over to first base is Rendell Ellis. So now for Ben Berglund, the leadoff hitter, as we'll have a meeting at the mound with Nikowski, as this might be the end of his run, or they might give him the inning. We will know momentarily, but Berglund, the righty, going to get some coaching here. Eastview now tying up the number of hits that the Mustangs have with that Boyer single. It's three apiece. Two of those hits for Eastview coming in this inning. Tyler Huerta with a leadoff single and Daniel Boyer with an RBI single. Other than that, it's been another hit by pitch and a pair of walks. Santana was hit by pitch. He came around to score. Quintanilla walked. He's now at third. Well, Perez is at third. You, you get the deal. Boyer singled. So this has been a pair of singles, a pair of walks, and a hit by pitch has gotten us to this point. And now Ben Berglund still yet to have a base hit today. You know how it's been with Ben. There's still two outs in the inning. Misses outside, so Nikowski can't quite settle it down yet. He's at a 1-0 pitch to Berglund with nowhere to put him. The 1-0, that's going to miss as well. So Berglund in excellent position with the bases loaded and two outs. He's got a 2 to nothing count. And with the bases loaded, this is going to have to be something from Nikowski. He's going to have to find the zone here. Berglund's aware of it. Here's the 2-0. Ben chops this one, and that's not going to get by the second baseman, but he can't field it cleanly. He got a glove on it, and that is going to be a base hit, surely an error. But Berglund is aboard once again. That's the second time that he has reached via an error. But he will certainly take that as Boyer comes around to third base. Perez comes in to score, and Ellis now up at second with the bases loaded once again. Brings up Ryan Pullen. He's over two today as a hit by pitch as well. As this one gets away. If Pullen can can uh reach safely here, one way or the other. They will have batted around as Tyler Huerta is on deck. But here's Nikowski. As Pullen swings on this one, this one's lifted high into the air. This one drifting out of play. It'll be out if it stays fair. And it, well, I said that wrong. It will be an out if it stays in play. It did not stay in play. But now Ryan Pullen with a ball and a strike. and also struggling a bit at the plate as of late. He went one for four against Cedar Park, was 0 for three with a hit by pitch the game before that. That's going to miss for ball two. So a 2-1 count. The Eastview second baseman steps in. He swings at this one. This one's popped up on the infield, and that could do it. Charging underneath it is the first baseman. He comes there underneath it to make the put out. So Poland pops out to end the inning, but all nine batters reach the plate for Eastview there. It was a productive inning in the second and now fifth innings. Eastview scores three, puts them up six to three, and now they'll have to defend it as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Eastview with a pair of base hits, a pair of walks, and a hit by pitch. Plate three in the top of the fifth. They lead it 6-3, to three, headed to the bottom of the fifth. For the home team, it'll be A.J. Scoville, Jake Carter, and Isaias Roman. So 9-1-2 do up for them. We'll be back in 30 seconds. 
What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. It's another inning for Reyes. No chance to <laughs> pull him after what he did in the top of the f or the bottom of the fourth. Two strikeouts and a lineout for a one-two-three inning, and now they've got nine-one-two due up in the bottom of the fifth. It'll be AJ Scoville, the DH, to the plate first. Swings and fouls. So strike one. The Mustang DH, the nine hole hitter. So he looks at pitch number two in the dirt. So he's got a ball and a strike. Scoville popped out over to third base, and Santana is first time up. As he belts this one to center field, Huerta drifting back. He's on the run, settles, and makes the play. Huerta got on his horse, sprinted, was able to slow down and ease into the catch for out number one. So a fly out for out number one. Brings Jake Carter to the plate. Carter the shortstop. Swings at this one and sends it to second. Pullen is there on the play, throws over, and the throw is in time for the put out. So a quick two for Patrick Reyes as his quality start continues. Brings up Roman. Carter now over three on the day. The first three hitters in the order for Marble Falls as it stands are 0 for seven. As this one's hit directly at Huerta, he's going to have to range back. And he is there, another put out. So two fly outs to center in the bottom of the fifth. And a quick one, two, three inning for Patrick Reyes. He is through five complete. One of the more excellent starts for an Eastview pitcher. As they have a six to three lead, Marble Falls down to their final six outs. Eastview will head now to the top of the sixth inning. It'll be the same three that led off the fifth. It'll be Huerta, Santana, and Torres right after this. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Okay, okay. back into it. Tyler Huerta looking to keep his nice day behind the plate going. To compliment his excellent play in the field, got some really excellent reads. Some good jumps on some of those balls hit out there. That's a task that they make look so much easier than it is. It's really hard to judge a ball coming right at you off the bat. Really skews with your perspective. But it'll be Nikowski out there for another inning. Started showing some cracks there in the fifth, but they're going to let him out there for another try. Other than that fifth inning, Evan Nikowski has been very good. He came in at the start of the third, walked and uh, gave up a single to his first two hitters, then retired his next, well, four in a row. Then there was an error that was technically on the pitcher, so don't feel bad for him on that because it was his own error. But he 
then retired three in a row, one, well, four in a row, got the error, and then two in a row, so effectively. He pitched quality enough to get all those outs in a row, but just couldn't quite do it. Got six out of seven in a row between the third and fourth innings. And then Huerta led off with a single in the fifth. And it sort of unraveled from there. The locks have been the killer for him. As he's given up three singles across three innings. But two of them t came in that fifth. And it was a big part of Eastview scoring those three. But if he can keep guys... Off the bases with the free passes as this one's grounded to second base. Huerto got some speed, and that's going to be a tough putout, but it is there in time, and I think that's the correct call. A real bang-bang play for out number one. Brings Jesus Santana to the plate. Was hit by a pitch, and the fifth came around to score. It was Huerta Santana and Perez by way of Quintanilla that came around in the fifth. And now Santana to the plate once again, looking for his second base hit. Chops a foul ball, just gets a piece of it. Now nothing in one. This one misses outside, skips to the backstop. Now a ball and a strike to the Eastview third baseman. Hasn't been called on a whole lot defensively. But now here's the 1-1. Takes this one inside. So 2-1, nobody on, one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Eastview's got five more outs to try and add some insurance. But they are in a good place, up three. Nikowski, the 2 1 delivery. That's going to miss high, so it's a 3 1 count to Santana. Torres is on deck looking to avoid four strikeouts on the day. But now the 3 1. That's going to miss. Skips in the dirt ball for Santana. With his second free base of the day, one walk, one hit by pitch. Brings up Gary. Lefty with a chance to right the ship a little bit. Okay. Takes the first pitch, that's strike one. And all three of his outs today, Torres has been the first out of the inning. As they have been really trying to go for that pickoff today. There have been a few times that Marble Falls has felt like they've had it. But nothing doing yet. As El Warkowski has gotten some pretty good tags down. And now nothing in one. Torres chops this one foul. He's down 0-2. Reyes on deck. Side of it. Just a heck of a night on the mound. Only giving up one big inning of damage so far. So we are now into the sixth. This here's the 0-2 as Torres taking strike or ball one. He's now coming set, taking inside, and Torres is going to get plunked. So another hit by pitch, Gary. That's a, that's one way to get on base. Because that is the fourth batter hit by Eastview pitching here tonight, or other way around by Marble Falls pitching in Eastview batters. Now, meeting at, at the mound, this might be it for Evan Nikowski. And it, it shall be. Nikowski will stay on in the field. Looks like he might be going out to center. So we will have a pitching change. A couple of guys have jogged into the mount or the, the dugout here, so I'm not sure exactly what's gonna be.
we'll keep it here while we try to uh, just figure out some of these defensive changes. I've seen Zamaripa go to the dugout. I've seen Hudson McBride, who has now come out of the dugout. He went in as well. I think I also saw Elwerkowski go in as well. It looks like it might be Elwerkowski coming to the mound. So Zamaripa has played in right. He's played at second. And now he's jogging back out of the dugout here. So that does, in fact, end Evan Nikowski's night. He goes three and what, two-thirds? No, just three and a third as there's only one out in the inning. So three and a third for Evan Nikowski gives up three runs. And now Elwerkowski to the mound. Just want to get a, a check on these these position changes. Nobody looks like it might be Nikowski out in center. I believe Nikowski started in right. But it is in fact Elwerkowski on the mound. Catcher stays the same, of course. So Ramon still behind the plate. Patrick Reyes is due up for your Patriots. We'll go ahead and just keep it here, but it looks like number 22, Hudson McBride, will be moving to first base. Howarkowski to the mound. Fourteen. Yon Zamaripa will be at third. Carter stays the same. Carter at short. So that's the infield changes. Looks like Nikowski will be replacing the center fielder. which would put Cochran in right. So let's take you around it. On the mound is Brady Elwerkowski. Patrick Gray is at the plate. Behind home plate is Isaias Roman. At first base is Hudson McBride, as Reyes takes a big swing at that one for strike one. So Hudson McBride at first. Remaining at second is Bryce Atkinson, the starting pitcher. At, at short, it should be Jake Carter. At third base, it'll be Yon Zamaripa. In left field, it's Jet Zarita, the designated fielder here tonight. Evan Nikowski appears to have taken control of center field as that's now 0-2 to Reyes. And now in right, Kate Cochran shifts back over there. And that's all she wrote. So now with two on and one out, an 0-2 count to Patrick Reyes, who's been filthy on the mound here tonight. Here's the 0-2 pitch to him. He swings and misses at it. And that's out number two. So Torres at first on the hit by pitch. Santana walked. He's at second base. Joe Quintanilla now to the plate. He has walked twice and struck out. How's everyone's night? Good? ECU with a lead. Haven't had many chances to operate with a lead, and that's going to be a high strike. Is that one catching the outside corner, and all of a sudden, Marble Falls can't miss the zone. Brady Elwerkowski is dealing right now. That's a swing and a miss for Quintanilla. So Brady Elwerkowski in relief. An excellent, excellent performance for him. As he gets... Well, he struck out the side uh, <laughs> for himself. He only faced two batters, both of them swinging strikes. Huerta was the leadoff batter. He grounded out. That's it for Eastview in the sixth. A walk and a hit by pitch. We head to the bottom of the sixth now. Eastview 
No runs scored, but they do lead it 6-3. to three. They've only got three hits, but six runs. Really doing a good job here at the plate. Good eye, swinging at strikes, not swinging at balls. And now that's why they've got a 6-3 to three lead for Marble Falls. They now head to the bottom of the sixth. They've only got six outs left to work with. It's Jones Amaripa, Cade Cochran, and Hudson McBride do up. Patrick Rea is going to get another nod to keep his outing going, as he might as well. He's retired the last seven batters that he has faced. We'll go ahead and take a 30-second break. We'll be back in just a moment. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Zamaripa through the plate. Patrick Rea is back to the mound. Through five complete, he's only given up three hits and three runs. Not all of which earned. Well, no, all the runs are earned, but Eastview does still have a few errors. Now one and one to the leadoff hitter. Mustangs have a good chance to try and tie things this thing up through the, se uh, the sixth and seventh here. They've got three, four, five due up here in the bottom of the sixth inning. But if they're going to get something going, it would behoove them to, to get on it now because they've got a two to one count to the leadoff three-hole hitter. As this one's popped up high and deep into left field, or shallow left, excuse me, Santana, and ranging under it, coming all the way to chase that thing down is Ben Berglund. That one got out of the infield and right in no man's land, a, a real tough opportunity for Santana and Berglund. And Berglund ran about a quarter of a mile to try and get that ball, and he did. So a rough outing for Zamaripa, 0 for 3 on the day. So a bit of a, not quite a fly out, a bit of a pop up into shallow center or shallow left. Which brings up the center fielder slash right fielder, Kate Cochran. He's played both today. He's out in right field right now, though. There's nobody on with one out. Was Cochran takes the first pitch inside for ball one. Misses high. So 2-0 to the cleanup hitter, Kate Cochran. That's a good pitch there. Misses high, so three balls, one strike to Cochran. A one-out base running threat. Reyes is going to try and shut it down as Hudson McBride is on deck. As Cochran fouls that one back. So now the count full as Kale is going to try and be the first base runner for Marble Falls since he walked in the third inning. But here's the payoff, the 3-2. That's going to miss inside. Ball four. Good take there from Kale Cochran as he reaches as a one-out walk. Yep, that's the first base runner allowed since the third inning, since the last time Kale Cochran was up. Similar result. It was a five-pitch walk there. It was a six-pitch walk. But it brings out McBride, who's one for two today, single in a line out. Because this one's fouled back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Now nothing and one. McBride now at first base. Played third most of the game. Runner faints at it. Santana going to play it off the hop. Only plays it first. And the play is made. That's why I favor the look at the whole ballpark rather than just trying to focus on the, the batter circle. Try and give you as good a view as everything, even if it sacrifices the most pristine look at particularly right-handed batters here. But another well-read defensive play by Santana. That's his first grounder of the game. Or anything not in the air. Only has one put out. Well, now two. But he had a pop out in the second and now a ground out in the sixth. Now a ball to the new pitcher, Radio Workowski. Runner advances to second with two outs. Checks his swing, didn't go. So a runner at second base with two outs. Reyes checks the runner, the 2 0. That's going to miss high for ball three. Nikowski on deck. The three and nothing. That misses low, a four pitch walk to Radio Orkowski. So two base runners in the inning for Marble Falls, both of them walks, as the runner advancing on the McBride ground out is sort of nullified. Now it's runners at first and second with two outs. Nikowski once again. Santana coming to join. I want to calm Patrick down a little bit. He's, he's looking okay. Just a poor pitch walk there. Don't let it get away from you here. Is now the right-handed batter, Nikowski. Now playing out in the outfield, went three and a third on the mound. Now ball five from Patrick. The 1-0, here comes Reyes. That's a big swing there at that pitch, strike one. Time to find the zone there. One one. That's another swing and a miss. And after the four pitch walk, two out of the next three pitches are strikes. Now Evan Nikowski down to his final one with two on and two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Starting to get a little chilly out here. Zreya steps off. The one, two. Swing and a miss, strike three, that'll end the inning. Huge pitch from Patrick Reyes to strand the bases. Marble Falls leaves a runner on first and second, so two walks in the inning is all that Reyes allows. He is through six on a master class, just three runs given up in the third. Since then, he's only allowed three runners on the base paths. One walk in the third, and then two walks here in the sixth. So we head now to the top of the seventh. Marble Falls now down to their last three outs. Eastview with three more of their own to try and add on some insurance. They lead it by three. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry and I wanted to keep playing, but I graduated. No colleges called and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, 
I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Eight nine one for the Patriots. Daniel Boyer due up. Single his last time up. Drove in the fifth run of the game. Boyer one for two. Single a strikeout and a hit by pitch. Taking high for ball one. Berglund's hitting streak on the line here as he will be the third batter in this seventh inning. He's had at least one base hit in each of the games that we have played here this season. Is that ball landing harmlessly? But he is technically 0 for 4 today. has reached twice via error. Now 1 for 1. And that's a big cut and a big wave. So now Boyer down to his final strike, 1 and 2. Nobody out, as this is the leadoff batter in the top of the seventh. Takes that one. That one's high. Because that's foul tip, so staying alive here is Boyer. It's Brady Owerkowski out there once again. Lowerkowski only faced two batters, but struck them both out. So he is now through two-thirds innings of work as he misses there. Count goes full to Daniel Boyer, who's been productive in entering the lineup. His 3-2 pitch is fouled back. Out of play. So we'll stay alive here with the 3-2 pitch. Here's another. Is this one's again fouled back. This one hooking into the parking lot. It is now bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. <laughs> so there's a few balls out there in the parking lot. But another 3-2 pitch coming to Daniel Boyer as he is fighting to stay alive here. Ellis on deck. Here's the pitch. As he fouls another one back. Really fighting. It's a good at bat here. This is getting dangerous behind the stands. Bombs dropping from Daniel Boyer. But now another 3 2 delivery coming. Now Warkowski comes set. Here's the delivery. That's going to miss low. A walk drawn. A beautiful at bat from Daniel Boyer. Because if he keeps hitting like that, he hasn't committed an error today. He might find himself a fixture in this lineup. Brings up Randall Ellis. Nobody on, one out. As this bunt has popped up, boy, you're going to have to run back on it. And good job keeping his head up as he could have been doubled off there easily. So the botched bunt attempt by Ellis sends him down, which likely ends his night behind the plate. Did go hitless on a fielder's choice, an error, a walk, and then that pop up there. As a swing and a miss for Berglund, he's also over today, over four. But Boyer, not too aggressive with the lead. Now taking a few steps out. Till he's got some speed on the base paths. As that one whistles by Berglund's ear, that's ball one. Pulling on deck. Ryan also looking for his first hit of the game. Did reach safely with a hit by pitch. 
Berglund has gotten on base twice, just both of them were errors. Because that's a swing and a miss there. As Elwerkowski in his relief appearance has thrown some pretty tough stuff. Now the one two. As Berglund takes that one on the outside corner. It's a tough take there. As the catcher, Isaias Roman, gives the umpire a little piece of his mind with that. Now two balls, two strikes. As Berglund chops this one, also foul, drifting back to the parking lot. Ooh. <laughs> Almost hit a moving car. That's the real entertainment here tonight is seeing cars get hit with foul balls. Boyer with the leadoff first. Berglund swings and misses at that one. That's another strikeout for El Warkowski. That's out number two of the inning. So Ryan Pullen comes up with a one on and two outs here in the top of the seventh. Take strike one. The 0 1. As Poland reaches out and pokes this one high into the air on the first base side and coming on to make the play for out number three this is the new second baseman, Bryce Atkinson. So that'll do it. Daniel Boyer with an excellent at-bat to draw the leadoff walk, but nobody else can support him in that. And out number three is recorded. So ECU not able to add the insurance run, but they do head to the bottom of the seventh do-or-die time for Marble Falls. They trail it by three with eight, nine, and one due up. It will be Ben Berglund on for the save opportunity as it is within three runs. That does it for Patrick Reyes. Six excellent innings. Only gives up three runs, three hits. As we head now to the bottom of the seventh. Last break of the night in case we have extras. But we won't, uh, we won't talk about that. We won't even think about that as Ben Berglund comes on to try and shut the door. But Hopefully, this is our last break on the broadcast. We head to the bottom of the seventh. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. As it's Mr. Bombastic due up to start at the bottom of the seventh. Kenny Atkinson. Of course, that's an NBA head coach, as that's going to be a fouled off bunt attempt. As Bryce is at the plate, he's one for two today. So that's strike two. So Ben Berglund. Throwing strikes early, his first two pitches find the zone. Now Bryce Atkinson looking for his second base hit of the game to try and get a rally going here in the bottom of the seventh. Quintanilla, good stop. A.J. Scoville on deck. The Berglund's got to be thinking to get two outs before the order turns over. Now the one-two. Atkinson. Laces this one, but Pullen is there to knock it down off one hop. The throw over is in time to Reyes, who's taken over at first base for out number one. So 
So just a quick 4-3 put out. Brings up A.J. Scoville, who was 0 for 2 on the day. D.H. looking to turn his game and this game around with one swing of the bat. Jake Carter on deck. As here's Berglund. First pitch. Ooh, just misses inside, ball one. It's a tough take from Scoville. It's now 2-0. That ball gets away. Berglund taking his time. Deep breath. The 2-0. 3-0 now. I think Scoville should still be taking here with one out. And he does, and that one's in there for strike one. Now two and one. Here's the pitch. Excuse me, three and one, and that's going to miss for ball four. Brings up Jake Carter. Jake Carter over three on the day. Still the top three hitters in the order for Marble Falls are a combined 0 for 9. Carter looking to keep the rally going. Try and reach base without recording it out. The tying run is on deck with one out. Berglund looking in. Here's the pitch. That's in there for strike one. Carter not happy with the call. Oh one, Berglund. That one misses low. The throw over, not attack. Do have a pinch runner. It's Jet Zarito who's been playing out and left. So Scoville, the DH, that should be it for his night. The one one is chopped over to shortstop, charging up on it and can't make the play. Running up on it was Boyer. That will go in as an E6. Tough time to record an error. This is Zarita now at second base. And Isaiah's from on the game tying run. Also 0 for 3 on the day. Berglund checking the runner at second. Looks in. Here's the pitch. As that one hits him, as Berglund getting a little rattled. So here comes the rally. Base is loaded with just one out. So we're going to have a meeting with Berglund here. Go ahead and check on him. As in relief, Ben Berglund has been a pretty reliable arm. But now he has loaded him up. The exception of the error over at short, coming in a big spot from Boyer. But now a new batter, it's Zamaripa. Taken there when that's a ball. Nowhere to put him here for Berglund. Zisu not thinking extras here tonight. Zamaripa also hitless today over three. The 1 0 to him. As that one's hit over the infield, and that'll be down for a base hit. That one's going to get all the way back to the wall. That scores two. A runner digging for third, and that is a one-out double to bring this game within one, and the tying run is 90 feet away. The game-winning run, just 180. So Zarita comes around to score. Carter comes around to score. Roman. Now at third, brings up Kale Cochran, who is three walks on the day. But they do have one more open base. Strike one. Hudson McBride on deck. As something hit deep enough, could tie the game. A 
was a 1-0 count, or excuse me, an 0-1 count. The Marble Falls right fielder stepping into the box. Berglund looking in. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. It's a big strike. Berglund is now, he's got a little bit of room to work. But that double has eliminated his room for error. As here's the 0-2. High. It's now the 1-2. That catches the outside corner, strike three called. Brings up Hudson McBride on a big strikeout for Ben Berglund, his first of the game. Five strikeouts in the game for Reyes, that's the first for Berglund. Now McBride to the plate, and he hits him. So two hit batters, brings up Brady Elwerkowski and the Kahoot music to try and walk this thing off. He's out of places to put him, so a walker, a hit batter, ties the game. So we're gonna have a pinch runner for McBride. Cody Smith, number 16, coming off the bench to pinch run for McBride, so Hudson McBride's night is done. And now with two outs, the base is loaded. Brady Elwerkowski, who's been good in relief since he came in, with a chance to either tie or walk this thing off. The pitch, outside for ball one. Berglund, looking in, 1-0 to the batter, bases loaded, two outs, bottom of the seventh, it's a one run ball game, here's the pitch, that's going to miss high ball two, so some life for Marble Falls here as they are within one run in the bottom of the seventh inning. Anything into the outfield likely wins the game. So here's the 2-0. That'll miss downstairs. We're a strike away from a tie game. And that means extras. Evan Nikowski on deck. As now with the 3-0. <laughs> Gonna get some coaching. Game just about to ent enter the two and a half hour mark in about 10 minutes. But the 3 0 pitch to Elwerkowski. And no, that's ball four. A couple of those pitches look like they might have caught corners, but no, we have a tie game. So six apiece. Evan Nikowski with a chance to play the hero. We have a tie game here in the bottom of the seventh. The o That's going to miss low ball four. As Berglund now all of a sudden struggling to find the zone. Couple hit by pitches. In the inning for the pitcher. As that's a swing and a miss. Now Eastview, if they want to win it, they'll have to do it in extras. The 1-1. One, one. That one's chopped to third base. Santana just going to go ahead and get the put out. But three runs come across for Marble Falls in the bottom of the seventh. We've got extras here. It's our first extra inning game of the season. Huerta, Santana, and Torres do up for Eastview. Back after this.
I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Care to make a long game longer? We head to the top of the eighth. Tyler Huerta, Jesus Santana, and Gary Torres do up for your Patriots as they look to get this thing done in the top of the eighth. Brady Owerkowski, who's been virtually unhittable for Eastview. Came in with a one out in the sixth. Retired five of the six batters he's faced. Daniel Boyer walked off of him. But here comes Tyler Huerta to try and get his team in good position. Where to the lefty. Looking to put something into the outfield to get things started. Eastview still lacks an extra base hit in the ball game tonight. Here comes Huerta. El Warkowski looking for another clean inning. Where to take strike one. The 0 1. So we're balling a strike now to, to the Patriot leadoff hitter, Tyler Huerta. Huerta fouls this one back. The one two. Misses outside. So two and two now. Here's Overkowski. That's gonna miss outside as well, so full count now to the Patriot center fielder, Tyler Huerta. He's one for three on the day. There's a single and a walk as well. Now 3-2. Misses high. That's a leadoff walk for Tyler Huerta. Brings up Jesus Santana. He's one for two. Has a hit by pitch and a walk. That brings up third baseman. Going to keep the rally going and put some runs up here in the top of the eighth. Now 1-0. Where to? No lead on first base, really. Now it takes a quick three steps. That's going to miss low. And that hit him. So another hit by pitch. That's his second of the game suffered by Santana. That is the fifth hit batsman. So Logan Niederhauser coming in to pinch hit. These poor Patriot hitters. They're just getting plunked out there. So Torres' night will be done.
as number five, Logan Niederhauser, comes to the plate with an RBI opportunity. Zellerkowski getting a little talking to at the mound. And for Eastview, you can go ahead and burn as many arms as you want. This is their last game until next Friday. So you don't have to worry about the turnaround between a Tuesday and Friday game or a Friday and Tuesday game. They've got a full week off. Might as well put Logan on the mound. <laughs> no, of course not. I don't want to mess with his schedule. But here he is at the plate, the right-handed batter, looking to bring home Huerta from second base. Elwerkowski looking in. Niederhauser showing bunk. That one's going to get away. The runners are going to advance. So now runners at second and third with nobody out for Eastview. And they are once again knocking at the door. And Niederhauser was thinking bunt, but now I let him swing it. No need for it. You've advanced the runners in. You didn't get the out. That one misses high, so Logan's with a 2-0 count. As the big Patriot arm looks to become the big Patriot bat. Here's the 2-0 to him. That's going to catch the outside corner, strike one. Niederhauser did go 0 for 2 against Cedar Park, but he went 2 for 3 in the game before that against Rouse. Is that's going to miss? So Niederhauser with the 3-1 count looking to get a free pass. Here's the 3-1 pitch to him. As he takes that, that's going to be well high. Ball four, and Elwerkowski has him loaded. Brings up Patrick Reyes. Hitless here tonight. He walked and came around to score in the second. To just the first run of the game for Eastview. Since then, he is 0 for 3, struck out his last time up in the sixth. But now, with bases loaded and nobody outs, you got to get one. Swing and a miss. Reyes looking to be the hero in many facets as he lifts this one high and deep to center field. This should be enough to score a run. Coming under it is Nikowski. Huerta gunning it for home. The throw well up the line. And no throw to home plate or to third. And Eastview has the lead back on the sacrifice fly from Patrick Reyes. Brings up Quintanilla as Huerta scored to take the lead back at 7-6. Santana now at third base as he tagged as well. Niederhauser remains at first. But now runners at the corners with the lead. And that's going to miss to Quintanilla. As we've seen, no lead is really safe. So Eastview should not be content with just the one. But now a ball and no strikes to Quintanilla. Quintanilla taking there as well. It's two balls and no strikes to him. Boyer already with an RBI today is on deck. He should get an opportunity. But now 2-0 and oh as Quintanilla steps back in. The righty looking to break it open a little further. Runner goes as he lifts this one through the infield. That's going to get over the glove. And with Niederhauser off and running, He's going to be able to advance all the way to third base. That was very nearly disastrous as that baseball just skipped over the glove of the shortstop or, or the second baseman there. It just got over it. And with the runner, Niederhauser, going, that very easily could have been doubled off. But instead, a run scores. Quintanilla with the RBI. He replaces the situation as runners at the corners once again. So Eastview back on top by two. Daniel Boyer looking to add one more to it. Showing bunt. Gets it down. That's a beauty. Goes back to the pitcher. Scoop to the mound. And he should be safe. No, they're going to call him out. Looks like Niederhauser has him beat to me. But they're going to call him out at the plate. The sacrifice doesn't work. And that is out number two. As the home plate umpire is not given... Eastview, uh, much leeway <laughs> on the game-tying walk from Berglund and on that play right there. 
But now with two outs, runners at first and second. Looked like the timing on that was just perfect, but all for not. Instead, it'll be Rendell Ellis looking for his first base hit of the day with a 1-0 count. That'll miss low. So now 2-0 two to, two and oh to Rendell Ellis. The 2-0. Is now El Rakowski has a three to nothing count to the Eastview nine hole hitter with a chance for Ben Berglund to come up to the plate. Big spot for a walk here for Ellis would be his second of the game. Strike one. Three balls, one strike. Two outs, two men on. Swing and a miss, a full count. So either way, Eastview has added two. Three balls, two strikes. Runners will be going. Checks the runner at second. Steps off. I mean, maybe just wanted a minute to regroup there, but you don't need to be worried about that runner right now. Now with 3-2, runner goes, and that's a swing and a miss, strike three. So that call out at home looms large as Eastview sends two home. They do it with a pair of walks, a hit by pitch, and a single from Joe Quintanilla. That puts him up 8-6 to six as we now head to the bottom of the eighth inning. We'll see who will be taking the mound here for Eastview. Looks like it might be Ryan Pullen. Looks like they might call the second baseman's name here. No. Yes, it will be Ryan Pullen taking the mound. Not sure if we've seen him in relief yet. But Berglund will move over to second. We'll go ahead and keep it here for the moment as Ryan Pullen will be out getting warm. I believe it was Nikowski that made the final out of the inning. So we'll be right where we were to start. The seventh, it'll be Atkinson, Scoville, and Carter. Atkinson grounded out, Scoville walked, and Carter reached via an error, which ended up being very... <laughs> Very back-breaking for Eastview. So Berglund goes one. Now Ryan Pullen with a chance for a save. So Atkinson with Ryan pulling on the mound. Here we go into the bottom of the eighth. Is that first pitch swinging? That's going to eat Reyes up. Berglund going to field it. The throw in time. How oh, about that? Reyes deflects it back to Berglund. Berglund catches it in stride, flips it back to Reyes. We've got our first out. <laughs> Never give up on the play. So we'll call that a 3-4-3. Three, three. <laughs> it was a good job, Berglund. You keep your head in the game there. Because that's going to miss inside to Scoville. Strike one. 
So a ball and a strike to A.J. Scoville. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Taken all the way there, ball two. Pulling, working quickly. And Quintanilla working a bit quickly back to him, but now it's a 3-1 count. And this is exactly how the disastrous seventh inning started. A 4-3 put out and a walk to Scoville. But that one in there, Scoville got a little far out ahead of himself as the count now full. The last one was a five-pitch walk to him. So we'll make it six, but that hit him in the heel. I'm not sure which takes precedent. Whether that would be a walk or a hit-by-pitch, I would assume that the, the hit-by-pitch would take precedent, even though that was technically ball four. As here comes Jake Carter. As this one off the glove of Pullen. Pullen going to have to turn around, make a quick throw, and that is going to be bases one and two loaded. If Pullen doesn't try to get a glove on that, that probably skips back to Berglund instead. It'll be Isaias Roman, who was hit his last time up. Young Zamaripa, due up, had that big double as we're going to have a meeting at the mound to talk through this. It's discussing how they're going to play this. It looks like Poland. It's going to be his ball. Gut check time. Can't give up back-to-back -back innings. All right. Roman steps to the plate. He's 0 for 3 with a hit by pitch today, taking the first pitch outside for ball one. One on, one out. Here's the 1-0. That's going to miss. Quintanilla stops it. Ooh. That could end up being crucial. But the 2-0. This will be a pitch to swing at. Here's the pitch. That's going to find the outside corner of beauty from Ryan Pullen. Isaiah looking for his first base hit, and it would be a big one. Two one. Berglund looking in. Or excuse me, that's uh, Pullen. Berglund was last inning, and now that's fouled off for strike two. So he's ahead of it now. After not having one all game, that's now three hit batters for Eastview in the last two innings. Speaks to how good Reyes was here tonight. The 2-2 two -two from Pullen. As that one's going to get away, the runners are going to go. So the first stop doesn't end up mattering as he can't get the second. But now double play out of order. This is the game tying run now. Standing there at second base. Solid contact brings both of them home. Now it's a full count to Roman. Here's the 3 2 pitch. That's poked out into the outfield. Where to running on it? This one could get down, and it does. That one will tie the game up once again. Isaias. A one out double. Pullen can't get it done in the bottom of the eighth. So it'll be Zamaripa, the guy who tied it last time. Well, the guy who brought it to within one last time with a chance to end it here. Kale Cochran on deck.
That one swung on, that'll get down for a base hit. Runner had to hold up, but he is now at third base with one out. Q shot, back-to-back -back base hits for Zamaripa. And the game-winning run now just 90 feet away for Kale Cochran, who has three walks and a strikeout today. It will be a pinch hitter after that, I believe. No, it looks like they're going to get McBride back into the game. But Cochran. Outside. The 1-0. That's swung on and fouled back. With McBride on deck. One and one. Swing and a miss. The one, two. That's going to hit him. Yeah, as after Reyes' excellent day, the pitching has just sort of fallen apart. McBride with the bases loaded. Anything into the outfield, anything deep enough scores the run. Pulling, looking at McBride. First pitch, fouled off. The one thing that Pullen has to his advantage is that McBride is bound to be increasingly aggressive here. As Elwerkowski is on deck. The 0 1. That's shot the foul. That one a few feet away. Is now Eastview with the chance at a strikeout to get out number two. So base is loaded, one out in a tie game in the bottom of the eighth inning. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Add misses outside, ball one. The one two. That's high. Good job for McBride to lay off that one. He's now at a two two count. As that's poked right at the shortstop. The throw coming home is in time, so they get the out on the fielder's choice. Good play by Boyer, a heads-up play, as the out at first would have ended the game. But everyone else advances. Brings up Brady Elwerkowski who has been on the mound over these past few innings. If he needs a base hit or we'll head to the ninth. Waves at a pitch in the dirt for ball one. Are you gonna stay here? The 0-1. Outside. The one one from Poland. That's gonna miss away. Now two and one. Of course now nowhere to put him. As this one's hit high and deep out to right field, Ellis has to play it. And he does. So two more runs come home. Marble Falls ties it up at the death once again. We head now to the top of the ninth. Running out of space in my book. And this is <laughs> this is the last page, too. So I, if they don't get out of it here, I don't know what I'm going to do. But now to the top of the ninth. For Eastview, it will be 1-2-3. It'll be Berglund, Pullen, and Huerta. 
We'll go ahead and take our own break and be back right after this. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Y'all tired yet? Well, we will almost certainly cross over the three-hour threshold as it is going to be Elwerkowski again. It was Elwerkowski. This is now his third full inning. He's good for two and a third right now. Was this one's fouled back at us? Pulling on deck. The first two hitters in the order still looking for their hit to the game. That's going to miss outside. Now a ball and a strike to Berglund. Elwerkowski, the delivery. 2-1 as the marathon continues. The 2-1 to Berglund. He checks his swing, and he did. Now to the ninth. It's like a real baseball game. That skips in the dirt, so a lead-off walk is Elwerkowski. Kind of saw it. As no one came to the ball, Berglund with a two-base walk. The catcher, Isaias Roman, didn't go get the ball as it got away, and Berglund just took off. So he's in safely. It's effectively a lead-off lead double. Is that is reasonably the end of the night. Is now the new pitcher coming in from right, and it looks like Elwerkowski is just going to replace him out in right. Is that Cochran? It is. Break time. So Elwerkowski's night is done on the mound. <laughs> Came in with one out in the sixth. Exits. With no outs in the night, the base runner is his own. So a fourth pitcher, Kate, uh, Kale Cochran. As Cochran, as he gets some warm-up throws in, we're going to go ahead and send it to a break. We'll be back 45 seconds or so. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. 
ViteView also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each ViteView ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about ViteView today. Cochran. He is the one who is pitching. Ryan Pullen. Coming to the plate. Ryan looking to make something happen offensively. He has been sent down his last four times to the plate. Only one of those got out of the infield. Is now. He has a chance to take the lead here with a hit into the outfield. If I'm Eastview, I'm looking to score at least 10 runs here at the bottom of the, at the top of the ninth. And maybe I'll feel safe. No, but the way this has gone, <laughs> might be here a while. The offense is starting to, to feel themselves. There's a pitcher starting to slip a little bit. A lot of hits by pitches here and a lot of walks here late. But Pullen looking for a base hit. Here's Cochran's first pitch as he'll pull back on the bunt. But now ball and no strikes. The 1-0 is showing bunts again. That'll ooh, catch the outside corner. So one and one to pull in. Where to on deck? Walked his last time up. Is a pair of those today. And when he comes up, he'll be looking for a second base hit. The 1-1. One, one. He reached out for it, and that one's popped up on the infield and put out. That's the third pop out of the game for Pullman. As Tyler Huerta now comes to the plate. Santana on deck. Niederhauser after him. Good opportunity for Tyler to pick up an RBI. Hasn't recorded one today. His one base hit was in the leadoff spot. Taken there. That misses. As the, to me, the validity of the home crowd complaints on balls and strikes has started to wane a little bit. As the longer this game goes, the more <laughs> outside the zone they want up to go. So now that's a ball and a strike to Huerta. And honestly, can't blame him. <laughs> As it's now 8-8 eight to eight in the top of the ninth inning. As we are in our second round of extras. Huerta with a 2-1. Santana on deck. Here's the 2 1. As Cochran comes set, checks the runner in where it calls time. There's the 2 1. Where it's taking, that's going to miss. A little high and outside. Now three balls and one strike. We're to looking for what might be his third walk of the day. <laughs> I'm sure he'd rather put this thing into the outfield. Because once again, Eastview still yet to have an extra base hit through eight and a third. Here's the three one to Huerta. Taken all the way there. No one misses well high. As now Tyler with his third walk. So Cochran back to the mound, Santana back to the plate. He is a pop out. He's technically only one for two today, but he has reached safely four times. He has two hit by pitches, a single and a walk. 
Rebounds. That one misses low. That's going to get away from the catcher. Both of the runners are going to advance. So now the game, well, the, the run to take the lead is 90 feet away. And with one out, just anything to the outfield will do it. Now a ball and no strikes to Santana. That's going to catch the outside corner. The 1-1. One, one. Santana taking. Not a lot of swings to bat here for Eastview in this bottom, or at the top of the ninth. That's now two balls and a strike to the cleanup hitter, third baseman, Jesus Santana. See you looking for their second district win on the season. Marble Falls, just their first. The two and one. That's a swing and a miss for strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Full count. Niederhauser on deck for what would be his second at-bat of the game. Walked his first time up. Now 3-2, one out. Runners at second and third. The 3-2. As that one's roped right at the second baseman. Berglund able to get, or the third baseman, excuse me. Berglund able to get back, but that's a line out. A good piece of contact. That's hit just a few inches towards the right. It's very possible you see his first extra base hit of the game. Instead, it's a line out, and Logan Niederhauser, it all rests upon his shoulders. As Cochran back to the bump. Here's his first pitch to Niederhauser. That catches the outside corner, strike one. It'll be 7-8-9 for Marble Falls in the home half of the ninth. That misses. Whoa! That's, that was a pitch in the dirt. That's a, mm. umpire wants to go home. <laughs> That ball, that, you saw it, skipped in the dirt. So Niederhauser now has the tough opportunity, or the tough uh, task of having to swing at everything. Now here's the 0-2. Is that to pop out of play? So still 0-2 to Niederhauser. Here's the pitch. As that one's hit right to the first baseman, the runner's going to charge, and he will be out at first base, so no runners come home to score as Niederhauser, with a real tough at-bat there, just hung out to dry a little bit. But that does it for Eastview in the away half of the ninth inning. They can't do much. They get runners to second and third on a couple of walks, but that is it as we head now to the bottom of the ninth inning. And Eastview has a real chance for the first time to walk this thing off. Go ahead and take a break. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. We'll be right back. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. So it will be Rendell Ellis. Rendell in relief here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Where he has a chance to either send this game further into extras 
or Marble Falls will pick up the victory. Should be Evan Nikowski, yep, number 12. Who ate up a big chunk of those innings. <coughs> but now, <coughs> Nikowski, who is 0 for 3 today, a pair of strikeouts. The Mustangs looking for just their fifth win of the season. Eastview also with just four wins right now. Marble Falls, though, 0-5. Eastview, 1-4. And here comes Ellis. And here comes Evan Nikowski. The bottom of the ninth. We start off with the ball inside. As uh, this one swung on and lifted Fallon out of play. So a ball and a strike. A ball and a strike to the leadoff hitter in the ninth. Ellis. That's a beauty. Mm. Ball. These few must be talking <laughs> a little too much from there. At the plate as they've quickly fallen out of favor. As this one's fouled and out of play. Heads up, everybody. Into the parking lot. One glances off the minivan. But now two balls, two strikes to Nikowski. Here comes Ellis. Zat misses outside for ball three. Three hours in now, the full count. That's going to miss inside for ball four. So the game winning run is aboard with nobody out in the bottom of the ninth. Bryce Atkinson to the plate. Bryce is one for four today, singled in the second. There's a couple of ground outs and a line out to his name as well here tonight. So here's Atkinson. That one's going to miss high. So Ellis just having a hard time throwing strikes. Is <coughs> this now the eight hitter Bryce Atkinson? Is Atkinson now looking at a two to nothing count? Six balls from Ellis so far in the bottom of the ninth inning. Make it seven. A.J. Scoville on deck. It's now 3-0. Outside corner, strike one. Runner goes. Pitch misses. So back-to-back -back walks as Eastview sort of scraping the bottom of the bullpen here. Ellis, haven't seen him pitch much. He's perfectly adept in the field, but he's been put in a, a, an incredibly difficult position. Already tired from playing the entirety of a, of a baseball game, now having to try and salvage it in the bottom of the ninth. Scoville takes a pitch down the middle for strike one. Carter on deck. Singled his last time up. This is low. Now a ball and a strike to Scoville. Swing and a miss. A big cut at that one. Threw him off balance. So now a ball and two strikes. Ellis looking for his first out of the inning. Well, the one-two delivery. Takes it low. Pitch gets away. The runner goes. And that one gets into the outfield. And the runner can advance. That looked like it could have been the end of the game. But instead, both runners go. 
The ball just got away from Santana. As that should have been an out at third base for Nikowski. But instead, it's an even more impossible task here for Rendell Ellis, as he'll now have to get have to get out of a nobody out, but runners on second and third to jam. Second and third, yeah, I can't even talk anymore. This one's fouled back by Scoville. My grasp of words is not good to begin with. But now it's 2-2, once again to Scoville. Zach gets into the dirt, runners have to stay, the count goes full. Scoville over two with a walk and hit by pitch today. Here's the 3-2 pitch to him. As he lifts this one into center, where to dives for it, it gets by him, and that will be the ball game. Nikowski comes home to score, and Marble Falls has won an extra as 9-8 on a walk-off base hit by A.J. Scoville. Eastview pitching couldn't get it done in the seventh or the eighth. And they dropped the game to winless Marble Falls to make them tied for last place in the district with the Mustangs. Of course, the Mustangs now have the tiebreaker. So Eastview falling to one and five in district play. Marble Falls improving to one and five as we will go ahead and sign off here. That will do it for us. Well over three hours into this game now. Just crashing that threshold. But that'll do it for us for now and for a while our next game will not be for another week. Looking ahead to the schedule, we will head home for two games in a row for the first time this season. We haven't had back-to-back -back home games yet. It'll be versus Leander on Friday, April 8th. That's one week from now at 7 p.m. And then we'll follow that up by taking on Liberty Hill once again. That one on Saturday at 1 p.m. So a quick turnaround for the guys there. But gonna go ahead and have some time off get some practice done, get some work under their belts. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. The Patriots can't hold on as the home team gets the victory 9-8. to eight. I have been Jack Farrell. It's always a pleasure uh, doing these games. Glad that we could make the trip out here to carry the game for you. Unfortunately, Eastview not able to get it done. They drop it 9-8. to eight to the home team, the Marble Falls Mustangs. That'll go ahead and uh, do it for us. Final score in nine innings. Marble Falls nine, Eastview eight. Good night, everybody.